All right, that's it for our demo. Um, now I'm going to turn it over to William for the live Q&A portion of this session. Um, I see a question from the audience, uh, specifically we not ask if the situation arises that developer one and two have developed their code in their one branches and wanted to merge both the developer's code. What is the best optimal way to have parallel commits? Uh, William? Yeah, let me, uh, let me see if I can take a look. So uh, in this situation, there's, there seems to be two developers. This is from Vinod, thanks for the question. Um, so both developers have developed their code in their one branches. So in this case, it sounds like we have, um, you know, some type of branching, branching strategy where there's a, there's a master branch or a, or a feature branch. And then each of those developers have created their own branch off of that where um, that's their own feature branch that they're developing their code in. And now they want to uh, both merge in that code. What would be the optimal way to have parallel commits? Uh, and so uh, I would say in this way, I don't, I don't know that there's a, um, a, huge, a huge difficult strategy in order to enable this workflow. Uh, in fact, with the with using Git, which is uh, what GitLab uses as our as our version control, uh, you you basically get this functionality out of the box. Um, and so, in a nutshell, developer one is going to merge their feature branch back into, uh, let's say, the main branch. Um, then they just uh, would submit a merge request through GitLab, as you saw. That merge request would kick off. It would have all the testing that you saw in the demo, um, and you go could you could even reply to a review environment, and then you could merge that into the master branch. Um, now, a, a few things may arise, and then then developer two. So it sounds like um, maybe you would want to test both code changes together before merging them into the main branch and getting them out into production. Um, in that case, you could you could merge them both into uh, into an integration branch, or simply uh, merge one of those branches into the other. So that's that's a flow that we use here at GitLab frequently. Uh, when I'm doing development, uh, you know, I'll often have my own feature branch. We use a very simple model. We have a feature branch um, for each and every change, um, and then we try to make those changes very small, and then we merge them back into main. So we just have one main branch, production runs off of that, uh, and we branch out for each of these small features. Now, from time to time, I'll be working on a feature, and one of my colleagues, Dan, uh, who you heard giving the demo, will also be working on a feature. Um, and in this case, we want to integrate both of those changes together before merging it back into main. Uh, and that's really as simple as me merging Dan's changes into mine uh, and now my branch contains both of the changes um, and I can kick off all of the tests. I can see how those two changes perform together in my review environment before merging them back into main. Uh, and what's really nice about GitLab, again, because it's, it's based on Git, uh, is by simply merging that uh, Dan's branch into mine, then my merge request updates automatically. I can see all of Dan's commits in my merge requests and the pipeline uh, kicks off. Uh, and in fact, GitLab will automatically close uh, his merge request if he had an open one open because um, his code has in effect been merged into mine. Um, so hopefully that's, uh, that's some helpful uh, explanation there. Um, so uh, additionally to anybody who's uh, on the call, we'll definitely send you uh, a copy of this recording. Uh, it looks like that was one of the other questions. And then uh, there is um, a few more questions in here as well. It looks like, um, are the default auto DevOps pipelines jobs as described in the GitLab CI YAML configuration? Uh, and if yes, can we see that? Um, that is a really good question. So uh, absolutely, let me see if I can share a window. Um, so I, uh, I just have a random uh, GitLab project here um, this is one that I have just a little bit of code in. This is, um, this is a pretty simple app. This is basically, I, I ran Rails new. 
and just generated this code. So uh, this is a very simple application. Nothing's been changed here. And so uh, there's a few different ways. Uh, you can see I've enabled auto DevOps. Uh, and so when you do that, when you go into the settings and you enable auto DevOps, what that does is it gives you uh, this GitLab CI YAML file, uh, which I may have pulled out of here, but I can show you what it looks like. So for example, let's go to uh, add a new file. And what you can see is that uh, I can choose a template, like if I want a Docker file or whatnot, and uh, I can choose GitLab CI YAML as my template. And then we have many uh, templates for you to choose from. You know, there's a Go template, uh, you know, uh, Laravel, if you're using that, there's a lot of different templates available and you can even build your own CI YAML templates. And the one that I wanna show off is Auto DevOps. So uh, Auto DevOps in effect is, um, is basically a GitLab CI YAML template. So the way that you automatically build all those pipelines that you saw in Dan's demo is based on this file. And so literally this is what the auto DevOps file is. You can see um, it's not too long, but it is thorough. And this is, uh, this is a file that you can actually then go in and edit and modify and build off of and extend. So we see a, a few ways that people use this. Uh, one would be as if, if they're starting from scratch and they need to figure out like, what should my YAML file look like? How, what stages does it need? Um, what jobs do I need in each stage? Just where do I start from? That could end up being a lot of researching in our docs and, uh, you know, can take you a long while. So the auto DevOps template, that just gets you up and started right away. Like here, you've got a, you've got a, uh, a pipeline. And now you can go and modify this pipeline. And so we see folks using two ways. One is they go into this file and they, they add to or they, they modify this uh, test suite as they need. Uh, and then the other way would be to use elements from this file in their own GitLab CI YAML file. Uh, so this template is, a, is available. It's in the code base online, literally in, in any, um, it's part of our templates repository. Um, and so you can see all of the templates we have here, including the auto DevOps template. Um, and in fact, I have a docs page open. This, uh, you can see that um, our, our YAML, uh, you know, specification is um, very thoroughly documented. So if you want to know everything about all of the keywords that are available, all of the ways that you can uh, extend and modify your pipelines and build uh, CICD as code. Uh, using this CI YAML file, um, you can see there's some thorough documentation available as well. Uh, um, thanks, William. I think there is additional questions. I just want to make sure we get through all of them, if not most of them. <laughs> so <laughs> in the Q&A box, uh, Jim Robbins asks, how do you configure the DAS for Auto DevOps? How do you configure the DAS for Auto DevOps? So, the really nice thing uh, is that it is part of the template and there is nothing to configure. So you can see that uh, I can disable it if I want, but if you're using auto DevOps, the auto DevOps template is automatically going to add a DAS, which is, stands for dynamic application security testing. So this is the part of the pipeline where once you've deployed your app into the, or once you've deployed your code into the review app, it then tests that running code uh, and you just get this out of the box. So you can see it's defined as a stage there. And then within the stage, these are the jobs that are defined and there's nothing for you to configure. So if you wanted to build your own pipeline, you could actually leverage this auto DevOps stage. And uh, this would be how you could configure DAST for any pipeline. Or if you just use the auto DevOps template, it comes out of the box and there's nothing to configure. It's literally just a, check the box, yes, for auto DevOps, and you, you, it, it'll add this template for you. All right, that's super helpful. Um, and now from Mike, uh, he's asking, how do the runner's Docker images work if your app is a desktop application? Is there more setup involved? That's, that's a good question. Let me, let me think about that. So if your application is a desktop application, uh, 
So let's let's just assume for the moment that um, it's a it's a Linux application. That becomes very easy because our uh, runners uh, run on Linux, and so anything that you would do to uh, test a Linux application, you can just run on runners. Uh, I do know that our runners also work on Mac OS X, and so if you're building like a Cocoa app uh, or um, like a like a Mac OS X native application, you can actually uh, run the runner on OS X and uh, run tests for that for that desktop application. Um, I know that we do also have in the works uh, or on the roadmap um, runners for Windows, and I it is just slipping my mind at the moment uh, if that is the case today. GitLab runner Windows. I'm just going to take a, a guess here and say, yes, you can do it on Windows as well. So you can actually install your runner on a Windows system, and uh, that way it can, it can execute on Windows. Um, I would say, in addition to running on that environment, there's, there's probably a few different things um, to testing out a desktop application uh, versus a web application. Um, but uh, any, anything that you can script, you can run in a runner. So uh, the runner is literally just a shell executable environment. So uh, anything from your shell that you would be able to say, go and execute this test job and automate that way, you can, you can run from a runner uh, and test your desktop apps uh, or mobile apps. Um, and that way I see questions again uh, about, uh, you know, testing uh, Android phones um, or other types of environments like that. The, the answer would be anything you can script, you can execute from a GitLab runner. All right. Uh, thanks, William. So we are at 1131 uh, and we still have two more questions. Um, uh, if everybody is okay with going a little bit over, we can continue. Otherwise, we can send the questions through email. The answers, I mean, for the, for the questions. So yeah. how do Let you... Let me see if I can, I can answer just a few quick ones here, and that way it'll at least be in the recording that folks will get afterwards. Um, yeah. Another question is, uh, what features from GitLab do I miss if I use uh, a different IDE, let's say Eclipse? Uh, instead of using the GitLab web ID? And the answer is you don't miss any features at all. Uh, and so in fact, I regularly use different IDEs to edit my code. Uh, and there's no requirement to use the GitLab web IDE. So I use the web ID all the time. In fact, I was using it right before this webinar. Um, and, and, but there's not a requirement to. So it just depends on the, the task that I'm doing. Uh, if I want to review somebody else's branch, I might just do it right in the web IDE because I don't have to change any of my local state. But uh, for my own local development, I use Atom Editor uh, and it works just fine. As soon as I push uh, my Git branch up to GitLab, everything just works. And so you can use GitLab with, uh, with any editor. In fact, uh, we even have an integration with Xcode. And so if you're using Xcode, you can push right from Xcode to uh, GitLab. Um, and then there was a uh, a question also about testing for Android, which I, I believe I answered um, earlier that you can, anything you can script, you can, uh, you can run. Um, awesome. With, with that, Agnes, any more questions uh, before we uh, close it down? No, no, I think that's all the questions we have. Thank you so much for submitting all of your questions. Um, so this demo and live Q&A session is something new that we're trying. So we'd love to hear what your thoughts on today's session um, and would appreciate your responses to our survey, which I'll drop in the chat. Um, we also would like to invite you to sign up for a free trial of GitLab Ultimate. I'll chat that link as well. And finally, if you have any other questions, don't hesitate to reach us via our sales contact page about gitlab.com slash sales. That's all for today. Thank you so much for joining us. And thanks, William, for being our product expert today. Oh, my pleasure.